Lesson 3.6, The Commutative Property of Multiplication. We learned in video 1.1 that the commutative property of addition states that we can change the order of two or more add-ins, and the sum stays the same. 3 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 3. 7 is equal to 7. So that was the commutative property of addition. The commutative property of multiplication states that when we change the order of the factors, the product stays the same. So 3 times 4 is equal to 4 times 3. 12 is equal to 12. The commutative property is sometimes called the order property. If we have two groups of 3, it's equal to 6. And if we have three groups of 2, it's equal to 6. We can change the order of the factors and the product stays the same. We can use the commutative property of multiplication to help us find products. Find two ways that we can arrange 15 counters in rows. We can make five rows of three, one, two, three, four, five rows of three in each row. We can make three rows of five, one row, two rows, three rows, with five in each row. Five times three is equal to 15, and three times five is equal to 15. So, to find the two ways that we can arrange 15 counters in rows, we can make five rows of three or three rows of five. When working with arrays, we need to be careful about which factor represents the equal groups and which factor represents the amount in each group. The amount in each group is what we would skip count by, isn't it? But when multiplying just to find a product, the commutative property says that we can multiply in any order to get the same product. So 5 times 3 is equal to 15, and 3 times 5 is equal to 15. Either way, either order, we're going to get the same product. We can draw a picture or use counters to show the commutative property of multiplication. We can complete the multiplication sentences. If you look here, how many groups do we have? We have two groups. That's two equal groups. They have the same amount inside. And how many are in each group? There are six. Two times six is equal to 12. We can change the order of the factors, and we can make six groups, one, two, three, four, five, six groups, with two in each group. And six times two is equal to 12. Two times six is equal to six times two. We changed the order of the factors, and the product stayed the same. We can write a multiplication sentence for each model. Then we can use the commutative property of multiplication to change the order of the factors and write a related multiplication sentence. For this model, we have two groups. There are five in each group. Two times five is equal to 10. We change the order of the factors, and because this one has the two first, we're going to put the 5 first for this one. Now we need the other factor, and the one that's missing is the 2, so that's going to go here. 2 times 5 is equal to 10, and 5 times 2 is equal to 10. We change the order of the factors, and the product remain the same. For this one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 groups, and there's 3 in each group. 4 times 3 is equal to 12. We can write a related multiplication sentence, changing the order using the commutative property of multiplication. And because the 4 was first and the 3 was second, we could put the 3 here now. The missing factor would be the 4. We've changed their order. 
4 times 3 is equal to 12, so 3 times 4 is equal to 12. Changing the order, the product will stay the same. We can use reasoning to find the unknown factor. We know that 2 times 6 is equal to 12 and 3 times 4 is equal to 12. So we can write 2 times 6 is equal to 3 times 4. We look at the factors on both sides of the equal sign to help us find the unknown number. And finding the product can help us. 7 times an unknown number is equal to 2 times 7. Do you know what would go here? If we thought about the commutative property, we'd know that we could put a 2 there, and the, each side of the equal sign would be equal to the other. Because 7 times 2 is equal to 14, and 2 times 7 is equal to 14. Now this one's a little trickier. 2 times some unknown number is equal to 4 times 4. What we should do is find the product of 4 times 4. Do you know what 4 times 4 is equal to? It's equal to 16. That means if it's equal to this side, this side must be 16. 2 times something is equal to 16. Do you know what it is? 2 times 8 is equal to 16. That means 2 times 8 is equal to 4 times 4. Here we have 4 times an unknown number is equal to 2 times 10. They don't have the same numbers, so they're not reversing the order like this one. We find 2 times 10. Do you know 2 times 10? It's equal to 20. If this is 20 and it's equal to this side, this side must be 20. 4 times an unknown number is equal to 20. Do you remember your 4 times table or how to skip count by 4s? 4 times 5 is 20. That means 4 times 5 is equal to 2 times 10. For this one, we have an unknown number in the front times 3 is equal to 9 times 2. If we find the product of 9 times 2, it'll help us. Do you know 9 times 2? It's equal to 18, which means this side must be equal to 18. An unknown number times 3 is equal to 18. The answer is 6. 6 times 3 is equal to 18. That means 6 times 3 is equal to 9 times 2. We need to write the letter of the multiplication sentence on the left. We have an A, B, and C to the multiplication sentence on the right that has the same value. A is 2 times 8. Which one of these would be equal to 2 times 8? If you said 8 times 2, you're right. The order of the factors is reversed, isn't it? 2 times 8 is equal to 8 times 2. So we put an A in this box. B is 4 times 3. Which one of these would have the same value as 4 times 3? If you said this one 3 times 4, you're right. We just reversed the order of the factors. 4 times 3 is equal to 3 times 4. So we put a B in this box. We're left with 3 times 7 is equal to 7 times 3, and put a C into this box. Now we've matched the ones on the left to the ones on the right. So the commutative property of addition told us that we can add in any order and get the same amount, like if you went from your house three blocks to your friend's house, 
then two more blocks to school, you walked five blocks. When you come home from school, you walk two blocks to your friend's house, then three blocks to your house, it's still five blocks. With multiplication, we can put the factors in any order and get the same product. We can do two times four, which is equal to eight, and we can flip it on its side. So we now have four groups of two, and it's still equal to eight. It doesn't matter which order, we still have the same product. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about what happens when we multiply by a one or a zero and the properties that go with them. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.